Anatomy is the study of the form and structure of the body. On the other hand, physiology deals with the functions of the body or any of its parts. Although anatomy and physiology are commonly studied as more or less independent disciplines, these two are both facets of the study of the animal body. A thorough knowledge of structure imparts much information about its function. However, a mere description of a structure without describing function would be of little practical value. Conversely, it is impossible to gain a thorough understanding of function without the basic knowledge of the structure. Depending on the level of complexity, anatomy can be divided into macroscopic or gross anatomy and microscopic anatomy. Macroscopic anatomy deals with the structures that can be seen with the naked eye, whereas microscopic anatomy deals with structures that can only be seen with the aid of a microscope. Further, microscopic anatomy includes cytology or study of cells and histology or study of tissues. As in anatomy, physiology also has levels of complexity. Cellular physiology is the study of how cells work. Meanwhile, organ physiology includes the study of specific organs while systems physiology deals with the functions of specific systems. The body has a complex organization extending from the most microscopic levels up to the macroscopic. Atoms, which are fundamental elements of matter, are joined together into complex clusters called molecules. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, for instance, which stores the hereditary information in all living organisms, is a macromolecule. Then, complex biological molecules are assembled into tiny compartments within cells called organelles, within which cellular activities are organized. DNA, for instance, and other molecules make up the chromosomes which are bounded together to form the nucleus. Then, nucleus together with other organelles and other elements are assembled in the membrane-bounded units we call cells, which are the basic structural units of living organisms. An example of cell is a neuron or nerve cell. Then, similar cells are then grouped to act as a functional unit called tissue. Nerve tissue, for instance, is a kind of tissue that is composed of neurons that are specialized in carrying electrical signals from one place to another in the body. Then, several different tissues are grouped together in a structural and functional unit called organ. Brain, for instance, is an organ composed of nervous tissue and other tissues that form protective coverings and blood distribution. And then, organs can work together for a common function forming an organ system. For instance, the organs like the brain, spinal cord, cranial and spinal nerves, as well as neurons that convey signals to and from them, group themselves to form the nervous system. Then finally, all the organ systems, including the nervous system, combine, forming a living organism. All organ systems must function in harmony to maintain homeostasis or overall state of bodily equilibrium or balance. There are 11 organ systems that make up a living organism. The integumentary system, which is composed of the skin and associated structures like the hairs, feathers, claws, hooves, and glands. The skeletal system, which is composed of bones, cartilages, and joints. The muscular system, which is composed of the muscles. The cardiovascular system, or the circulatory system, which is composed of the heart, blood vessels, and blood. Lymphatic system, which is composed of the lymphoid tissues, lymphatic vessels, and the lymph. The respiratory system, which is composed of the nostrils, trachea, lungs, and associated parts for breathing, the digestive system, which is composed of the alimentary tract and digestive glands, the urinary system, which is composed of the kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra, the reproductive system, which is composed of the gonads, the accessory sex glands, and ducts, the nervous system, which is composed of the brain, spinal cord, nerves, and sense organs, and the endocrine system, which is composed of the endocrine glands.
In order to become clear and accurate when describing body parts, different anatomic terms are being used. Basic anatomic terminology is based on imaginary slices called planes through the animal body that can be used as point or areas of reference. First is the median plane or mid-sagittal plane that runs down the center of the body lengthwise and divides it into equal left and right halves or left and right lateral regions. Second is the sagittal plane that runs the length of the body parallel to the median plane. Third is the transverse plane which is the plane across the body that divides it into cranial or head end and caudal or tail end parts. Then fourth is the dorsal or horizontal plane that runs the body at right angles to the sagittal and transverse planes. The dorsal plane divides the body into dorsal parts or parts towards the animal's back and ventral parts or parts towards the belly. Unlike with that of the median plane, the resulting parts demarcated by the sagittal, transverse, and dorsal planes are not necessarily equal. Directional terms in anatomy provide a common language for accurately and clearly describing body structures regardless of the position of the animal's body. These terms are used chiefly to describe relative positions of the different body parts. The terms medial and lateral refer to positions relative to the median plane. Medial means toward the median plane or toward the center line of the body, while lateral means away from the median plane. For instance, the medial surface of an animal's leg is the one closest to its body. The lateral surface of the leg is the outer surface. As shown in here, this is the medial side of the right hind limb well, this side is the lateral side of the left hind limb. We can also say that the urinary bladder is medial to the hips and the ribs are lateral to the lungs. Using the transverse plane as point of reference, the terms cranial and caudal refer to the ends of the animal as it stands on four legs. Cranial means toward the head or cranium and caudal means toward the tail or cauda. For example, the diaphragm is cranial to the stomach or the rump is caudal to the loin. Meanwhile, using the dorsal or horizontal plane as point of reference, the terms dorsal and ventral refer to up and down directions or positions, respectively. Dorsal means toward the back or top surface, and ventral means toward the belly or bottom surface of the animal. Dorsal and ventral are easiest to visualize in a standing animal, but they retain their meanings regardless of the animal's position. For example, we can say that the vertebral column or the backbone is dorsal to the heart and the sternum or breastbone is ventral to the heart. Rostral is a special term that is used only to describe positions or directions on the head. The term cranial loses its meaning on the head because the cranium is part of the head. Caudal retains its normal meaning on the head because it still means towards the tail end of the animal. Rostral means toward the tip of the nose or rostrum. For instance, an animal's eyes are located rostral to the ears, or the ball or top of the head is caudal to the forehead. Proximal and distal are terms used to describe positions only on extremities such as legs, ears, and tail relative to the body. Proximal means toward the body, and distal means away from the body. For instance, the shoulder is proximal to the elbow or the hock is distal to the knee. The back surface of the front leg from the wrist distally is called the palmar surface like the palm of the human hand, and proximal to the wrist is the caudal surface. The back of the hind leg from the hock distally is called the plantar surface like the plantar or ground surface of the human foot, and proximal to the hock is called the caudal surface, just like the front leg. Meanwhile, the front surface of both the front and hind legs is termed dorsal from the wrist and hock distally and termed cranial proximal to them. There are also common regional terms that are used to aid in describing anatomic location of the body parts as viewed externally. For recording purpose, for instance, it is easier to write fetlock than to have this body part described 
as the joint between the large metacarpal or metatarsal bone and the proximal phalanx. As an example, these are the common regional terms used in describing the body parts of a goat. The muzzle is the part of the face including the nasal bone, the upper lip, the lower lip, and the jaw. Bridge of nose is a region formed by the nasal bone. The forehead is a region formed by the frontal bone. The pole is the dorsal surface of the cranium or top of the head. Then the ear, the horn, the neck, which is the area connecting the head to the trunk of the body, the withers, which refers to the junction of the dorsal margins and the scapula, the chine, which refers to the region directly behind the withers, the loin, which refers to the lumbar region of the back, the back is the part of the vertebral column consisting of the chine or rack and the loin, the rump, which is the region of the top line extending from the sacrum to the tail head, the top line or the area of the vertebral column that extends from the withers to the tail head, the ribs, which are the paired curved bones extending from the thoracic vertebrae to the ventral portion of the trunk, the hip or point of hip, which refers to the prominence of the tuber coxae of the hip bone, the tail or the projecting rear end of the body, the tail head, which is the base of the tail where it lies between the pin bone, the pin bone or the pin, which refers to the caudal prominence of the ischium of the hip bone, the thigh, which is the region where femur is located, the stifle, which is the joint connecting the femur with the tibia and fibula, the shank, which is the part of the hind limb between the stifle and the hock, the hock or tarsus, or the region where the tarsal bones are located, canon, or the region between the knee and dew claw in forelimbs, and between the hock and dew claw in hind limbs, fetlock, which is the joint connecting the metacarpal and the proximal phalanx of the forelimb and the metatarsal and the proximal phalanx in the hind limb. Pastern, which refers to the joint connecting the proximal and middle phalanges. The hoof, which is the horny covering of the lower part of the foot. The flank, which refers to the side of the body extending from the last rib to the hind limb. The barrel, which is the trunk or the middle part of the animal body between the fore and hind legs, the dew claw, which refers to an accessory claw that projects caudally from the fetlock, the heel, which is the rear or caudal end of hoof, the sole, which refers to the underside or ventral aspect of the hoof, the toe or the cranial end of the hoof, the knee or carpus, which is the region where carpal bones are located, the forearm, which refers to the portion of the forelimb between the elbow and carpus, and it contains the bones of radius and ulna. The elbow, which is the joint connecting the humerus with the radius and ulna. The arm, which refers to the upper region of the forelimb where the bone humerus is located. The shoulder, which is the region around the joint connecting the scapula and the humerus. The chest floor, which refers to the ventral region of the sternum or the bottom of the sternum area, the brisket which is the cranial portion of the chest or the front of the chest between the two front legs just above the chest floor, and the heart girt which refers to the circumference of the chest and is measured just behind the withers and elbows. It is important to learn the principles of the anatomy and physiology of animals as knowledge in these fields of study will serve as the foundation in understanding the various disciplines involved in their overall management in order for them to efficiently produce the desired products like meat, milk, and eggs. Among these disciplines in animal production, where the principles of anatomy and physiology serve as backbone include animal reproduction, breeding, nutrition, and disease control.